Hello Internet, so nice to see you! A lot of guitar players ask me how to write better melodies. Now, melody writing is a big topic, there is a lot to know about that. It's deceptively simple, but in reality there is lots behind it. Today I want to share with you one very simple trick that will benefit a lot, especially guitar players, though it can be used by pretty much any other musician. We're gonna first hear how it sounds, and I'm gonna make two examples, one from classical music and one from more modern music, and then we can see exactly how to do it. But first, let's focus on the sound, because after all music is all about sound. The first example is the opening of Mozart's Symphony No. 40. You know this one. At the very start, Mozart will play the same melody twice, but the second time it plays that melody, the melody is somewhat lower. Let's hear it. And then, a few bars later, Mozart will play again the same melody twice, and the first time it's exactly the same melody as before, while the second time it now sounds higher in pitch. You can also find it very often in movie soundtracks. And in fact, it's often used to make those melodies really memorable. There are those little melodies, those figures, we call them, that are repeated at different pitches, and this kind of repetition, which is pretty much the same but not exactly the same, makes the melody much more memorable. But can sequencing be used in a more modern context? Now let's hear just a few seconds of Cory Henry's epic synth solo in the song Lingus by the band Snarky Puppy. Now you can hear how this line is built of short melodies that are repeated higher and lower in pitch, so it's not just a sequence of random notes, Cory Henry has in mind a few figures, a few short melodies, and is just moving them up and down in pitch on the keyboard. This is what makes this solo sound great. Well, and also the fact that Cory Henry is actually an amazing player. Anyway, if you listen to any kind of music, you will hear this trick used over and over again. But you know where I'm not hearing these enough? in guitar solos and in melodies written by guitar players. For some reason we guitar players think that every time we play something, then just after that we have to play something different. It would be much better, instead, to take a short phrase, a short figure, and sequencing it up and down a few times to give the idea that this melody is actually built out of something and not just random notes. Anyway, with no pretense at all that this one video will make you a composer as good as Mozart or an improviser as good as Cory Henry, let's see how exactly sequencing is done. So first of all, you need a scale, and let's pick the C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Now you have to take a melody, and let's start with a simple melody. I'm gonna pick something easy like uh, C, E, D, G. Now to sequence this melody, we start moving every single note of this melody one degree higher in the scale, so C becomes D, E becomes F, D becomes E, G becomes A, and now I play this new melody. Now I'm doing it again, so D becomes E, F becomes G, E becomes F, and A becomes B. And then I do the same thing over and over, every time I take every note of the melody and move it up one degree in the scale and play the resulting phrase. So now I have seven different variations of the melody, one starting from C, one starting from D, one starting from E, etc, etc, etc. Now I don't have to play those seven variations in order. I can play them going up, sure, I can play them going down, sure, but I can also jump back and forth between them. So I can play the one starting from C, followed by the one starting from F, followed by the one starting from A, followed by the one starting from B. Now we have done this with a very short and simple melody on the C major scale, 
But of course, you can do this in any scale you want, and using a melody as complex and long as you like. So you can sequence everything over G flat Lydian if you want, or A harmonic minor, or G Hungarian minor, or whatever you want. A very interesting thing happens if you are sequencing a phrase over the chromatic scale. In this case, if you're doing this on the guitar, the phrase is simply moving up and down one fret at a time, and you're not changing anything, so you're playing the exact same thing up and down the fretboard. Often, we guitar players don't do that because this looks too simple to us, but in fact, this thing can sound interesting. So, for instance, if I take one of my melody variations I found before, the melody E, G, F, B, I can just move everything one fret higher on the guitar and I'm sequencing it on the chromatic scale. And then again, and then again, and then again, and so on and so forth. I don't really need to calculate anything, I'm just moving the same figure higher up on the fretboard. But remember, you don't have necessarily to move fret by fret, you can jump around. And this is exactly what Corey Henry is doing in his solo. He's taking the same phrase and he's moving it around on the chromatic scale. That's why it sounds so modern. So you can just take a simple phrase like the one I just played and jump around the fretboard to make something interesting. So this is the basic technique of sequencing. My hope is that now that you know that this exists, you'll be able to hear this in songs and in the music you listen to, and gradually you can let this enter your vocabulary, so that your solo will get even just a little bit better. Now, even on a simple topic like sequencing, there will be a lot more to be said. And if you want to see a different but equally fascinating approach to sequences, you can have a look at the bonus ebook in my course Master of the Mod. In the bonus ebook, you see a different approach to use sequences to create solos and interesting phrases that you can reuse in your music. Master of the Mod, incidentally, is a complete course on scales and mod that you should take anyway if you want to become a very creative lead guitar player and to master the art of writing your melodies. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you have any comment, questions, requests, write them down in the comments. This is Tommaso Zilio of MrDforGuitar.com. And until next time, enjoy.